the sword Read. must be killed with the sword. Read. Here's the patience and the faith of these saints. So he wrote this book that condemns him. That means that when God returns, him and his race of people got to pay for the crimes that they did. Right. So if he wrote that, why would he condemn himself? I'm going to show you who wrote the Bible. Because we hear the white man wrote the Bible, but he did not. That's right. Black men wrote the Bible right. and were inspired by God, right? Isaiah, Ezekiel, Moses, these were black men. That's right. Not white men. Read. Do you want to proceed? Uh, yep. That's what I want. Now, it said, God gave the word, great was the company, meaning the prophets, of them that published it, meaning they, they wrote it down. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 8. Read. Now go. Write it before them in a table. So this is God talking to Isaiah. He said, Isaiah, go and write this, read. And note it in a book. And note it in where? In a book. Go write this down in a book, Isaiah. Read. That it may be for the time to come. That when people in the future generations read this thing, they will understand something that I need them to understand, Isaiah. Read. Forever and ever. Read. That this. That this. Is a rebellious people. So it's talking about the Israelites. Write this in the book, I say, that Israel is a rebellious people. Right. Know what that's talking about? Black people. For example, how many times you think people have to tell young kids to pull their pants up? You think you can walk down the street and see a, pan, a kid with his pants down here and tell him, hey, boy, pull your pants up. You think he's going to say, yes, sir, and pull them up? Or you think he's going to rebel and give you some back talk? I got another question. What about, it's going to sound controversial, what about the black woman today? You think you can correct her today and she'd be like, yeah, that makes sense? Or you think she's going to provide some, some, some backlash or some, some kickback? I'm talking about the average black woman today. Depends on the woman. Depends on the woman? Well, average. You can't. You don't, you, you don't see how black women carry themselves? Twerking on ambulances and twerking on slave castles over there in Africa and Ghana. And talking about they over in UK gonna get their coochie stretched and House, that's housewives. and and about right housewives of Atlanta and her, that's how they they move today, a lot of them more than you can count. So one can look at that and say, on average, they out of their mind. They they would rather today. I'm not you were married. That's good, but today the average black woman would rather have a baby with a man than marry a man. Right. That's out of order. But you think you can look them in the face and tell them that's out order today? You know the answer is no, right? Right. This is what God told Isaiah to write. Read it again. That this is a rebellious people. Read. Lying children. They lie. They rebellious and they lie. Read. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Children that will not listen to what this Bible says, no matter what it says. No matter what it says. So God gave these men inspiration to write these words down and these words rang true to the people that this Bible is talking about, right? The problem is, in slavery, white people took this Bible and manipulated it to make you think that Jesus was white, God was white, and all these other things that don't relate to us. So now when we see the Bible, we think it's, it's full of lies. We think it's tainted. But I'm going to show you something. You said that the white man, ideally, that's, that's how we think he wrote the book, right? Uh, Exodus 21 and 16. Get that. I'm going to show you he condemns himself if he wrote this Bible. If he wrote this Bible, then this condemns him to his face. Read. Now, before we read this, how did our people get over here to this country? Slave ships? And what was our status once we came over here? We were slaves. Watch this. Now, when they, they picked us up in Africa, right, did they ask us, did we want to come with them? They kidnapped us, right? Some would say stole us from our families, right? Okay, good. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 21 and verse 16. Read. And he that steals a man. Now, the Bible says he, the person that steals a man. Read. And selleth him. And sells him. Kidnaps a man. And then sells this man. How do you sell him? Into captivity or slavery. Read. Or if he be found in his head. 
hand. If he's still found in his hand, our people still over here in a land where we were kidnapped and brought to. So it's safe to say we're still in the hands of the person who kidnapped us. Is that fair? The Bible, read it again from the top. And he that still of a man read. and sell of him, or if he be found in his hand, read. he shall surely be put to death. God says he is condemned. That's what the Bible says. So would the white man write that? Get the revelations now. Now we're going to go to the back of the book. This is Exodus. In the beginning, let's get the ending and see if that changed in God's eyes. Get that real quick. Let's hurry quickly. Remember the point. If the white man wrote this book, why would he condemn himself in it? Read. The book of Revelations, chapter 13, and verse 9. Read. If any man have an ear, let him hear. You listening? He that leadeth into captivity. Captivity is slavery. The Bible in Revelation says, he that leads a people into slavery shall go into captivity. Must go into slavery. Bring it out. Read. He that killeth with the sword. Has this man killed many people? Matter of fact, the, the, the transatlantic slave trade, it, it said that over, what, 200 million men just died in the Middle Passage. And that's not including those that got over here and that was hung, beaten to death, raped. Right and that's up. not including the Native Americans, Indians that was over here. Teach. You're talking about hundreds of millions of people that were mad. That's called genocide. Teach. The Bible says, what again? Read. He that killed with the sword Read. must be killed with the sword. Read. Here's the patience and the faith of these saints. So he wrote this book. That condemns him. That means that when God returns, him and his race of people got to pay for the crimes that they did. So if he wrote that, why would he condemn himself? He wouldn't. He would not. That's showing you that this Bible couldn't have been written by him, or he was very stupid when he wrote it to condemn himself. I'm going to show you something else. Now, I said a bunch of the black people wrote this book. Let's get Moses first. The book of Exodus, chapter 4, and verse 6. And the Lord said, furthermore, unto him. So this is God talking to Moses. He told Moses, read. Put now thine hand into thy bosom. Put your hand in your bosom. Now remember, Moses was raised as what? Where did Moses live or grow up at? In Egypt, on the continent of Africa, raised as one of Pharaoh's sons. Now, I, maybe I'm a little bit slow, but are Africans white people? Nah, they can't be. Moses cannot pass for an Egyptian, except he was what complexion? Probably our complexion, maybe even darker. That's right. right. Probably blue midnight black, right. right? That's how Moses probably would have looked to be raised as an African child, read. And he put his hand into his bosom. So put your hand into your shirt or your coat pocket, Moses. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. So when Moses took his hand out, his hand was white. So. If, he, if Moses was a Caucasian man, is a miracle pulling your hand out and it's white? Nah. Which means Moses would have had to be what complexion? Dark skin. Read it again. That's right. Put now that hand into that bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put that hand into that bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again. And he, put it, and he plucked it out of his bosom. Read. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. It was turned again, black again. Wisdom of Solomon, or Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Ever heard someone say, I'm black and I'm beautiful? That, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. You hear me, bro? There's nothing new under the sun. Everything you think you ever heard somebody say, God got it recorded in the Bible. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you that. Read. I am black. I am what? I am black. Read. But comely. But beautiful. Before you ever thought of the term, I'm black and I'm beautiful, King Solomon, the wisest king to ever live, said it already. Right. right. Why would he say he's black and beautiful if he wasn't black and beautiful? Right. But you know what happens with this Bible? If you type in King Solomon on your phone right now, what complexion you think he's going to be? Not ours. Absolutely. Which means that the people that taught you this Bible are liars. It's not that the Bible is a lie. It's not that the Bible contradicts itself. It's that the people that have taught you the Bible have lied to you and contradicted themselves. That's, That's why right. I said, I'm not mad at you for saying Christianity. Christianity is a lie. Right. Christianity teaches that the Jews are black. I mean, white when the Bible says they're black. God is white when the Bible says he's black. Christ is white when the Bible says he's black. And God loves everybody and going to come back. Jesus is going to come out the sky and hug everybody. When the Bible says Jesus is going to come back and kill a lot of people. It says his garment is going to be so bloody, it's going to look like he treaded the wine press. That's how bloody his garment is going to be when he comes back. That doesn't sound like a happy person to me. That sounds like a very angry person 
when he comes back right. for the things that he see happening to his children, to his children, right? What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Oh!